Hi, this is Matt. And just like last year, we have our annual Christmas fudge recipe. A brand new one this year. One I've never seen anywhere else. We're going to make rose flavored fudge. Never heard of that before, huh? Well, watch and wait and see. Now, before we get going, let's make sure that we're ready to make fudge. These rules apply to all fudge. Come on over here. So we have a buttered pan, lightly buttered on the inside, not the bottom, just the inside to keep the sugar crystals down. We have some warm water and a pastry brush to wash the sides. Very important to keep the sugar crystals washed down, otherwise the fudge will go grainy on you. Okay, we've got candy thermometer, clean and ready to go. Calibrated, I know how far off of, of normal it reads for this. And then finally, water for the softball test for testing because I don't trust my candy thermometer. When the time comes, I'm gonna take the ice cubes out because they get in the way, but for now, I just want it to get cold. Now let's talk about the ingredients in our fudge. <clears throat> now I don't believe in using marshmallow cream or chocolate chips, those are ways you cheat. I like fudge done the old fashioned way. It's harder, but the results are much better. They don't have a gummy taste or an artificial taste. You just taste the flavor and it's sweet, okay? Now this one starts like all basic fudges with three ingredients. You have sugar, of course. We're gonna need three cups of sugar. Three cups of sugar, okay? Then milk, one cup of milk. I've used reduced fat or whole, it doesn't matter. One cup of milk. Two tablespoons of corn syrup, two of these. And a little bit of vanilla for flavor, as well as a little bit of red food coloring to make it pink, although this is completely optional. You do not have to do this. It's just if you don't, you get brown colored fudge rather than pink colored fudge, which isn't what people expect for rose. Okay, cut. And lastly, rose water. You can get this in Middle Eastern food stores. Um, it's not terribly expensive and it, oh, it smells wonderful. Ah, oh, wow, very good. Rose water, okay. <clears throat> Now, all the ingredients are in the pot. A couple things to remember. Don't get too hot. Fudge is about patience. You can't rush it. Just assume it's going to take you a while to bring it up to temperature. Use the best quality pot you have. I wish I had a copper pot. I can't afford one, but that's what I would use. I use the best one I have around nonetheless. Make sure it's centered on the burner, that there's no hot spots. You could have a part of the fudge that's ready to go and another part that's still not yet, and that would cause you havoc. So these basic fundamentals. Now, we've got it heating up right now. See, it's nicely going like so. I'm gonna wash the sides down to get these sugar crystals. Sugar crystals are your enemy. Sugar crystals can turn a smooth batch of fudge into a crystalline, crunchy nightmare, which is not what you want. So, I'm gonna wash down now, and occasionally as we go on, I don't wanna use too much water because I don't wanna throw off the balance in the fudge. And I'm going to wash those sugar crystals down with this warm water. Now, things are getting interesting. It's coming up to temperature. It's getting close to the point that I know it should be at. I'm keeping it moving, both to keep it from scorching on the bottom, but also to make sure there are no hot and cold spots, that the entire mixture is being heated evenly. Remember, when you're making fudge, you're basically making sugar plastic, and you have to get it to polymerize at just the right temperature. Now. For me, softball stage is 220 degrees because of my elevation and where I live. The books say 234 degrees, but 234 degrees is if you're at sea level and if your temperature, if your thermometer is properly calibrated. Mine is not, and yours may not be either. So you need to figure out exactly where it is. And how you do that is you test it in boiling water. Boiling water is 212 degrees at sea level. So you test yours to see if indeed it reads that depending on your elevation. And you can get on the internet to find out what boiling water should be at the elevation where you live. So for me, it's 220 degrees. I, I have my cold water here to test. Okay, so this is softball stage. And I have here, I can form a ball with it in the water, but it squishes when I get it in my hands here. So this is ready. Now, I immediately remove it from the heat. Turn the burner off. Take this out, and I move it just a little while longer. Now once you've removed it from the heat, it's critical you let it move just a little bit more 
so that you avoid scorching on the pan because the pan will still be hot. Move it far away from any other source of heat. Now, while it's hot, you're going to do a couple things. First off, wash off your candy thermometer. It's a lot easier to get the hot sy the syrup off now than it would be later once it's hard and stuck on here like glass. Now, immediately, I'm going to put in my three tablespoons of butter. Three tablespoons of butter. Okay. I'm going to mix this in gently. Okay. And a smidge of vanilla. A teaspoon. I never measure. There's only so much left in here anyways. There we go. That should do. And then I'm going to mix this gently. And then I'm not going to touch it again for at least 20 minutes until it's cooled to lukewarm. Now, got the pan sits here undisturbed until I can put my hand on the bottom and it's only lukewarm. It's way too hot right now. And I tell everybody to stay away and not to bump it, which is hard in my house. But if this gets bumped before it sets, it can set into, or until it, it's ready, it can get turned into a big gigantic sugar crystal. Okay, so it needs to cool undisturbed until about 110 degrees until you can comfortably put your hand on the bottom. So it's been about 20 minutes, and I can now take my hand, and I can put it on the, and it's cool enough to touch, okay? It's a very delicate time. Yes. So now I'm going to add a few flavors, and I'm going to start to mix it. So bring it over here, like so, okay? I'm going to add just a smidge of red food coloring. I prefer the paste stuff, but you can use the other if you like. It doesn't take much. This stuff's pretty powerful. And this is just to keep it from being brown. Okay, like so. Get it on my fingers too. And then with the rose water, oh, I think not too much because first off, it's pretty powerful stuff. And second off, because you'll throw the water balance off and, and then your fudge won't set. So, I think you're... Really about an eighth of a cup, even that. And then you start beating it. And oh, this is the hard part of making fudge. Just beat and beat. Okay. And basically, I'm going to keep beating this until it becomes, <clears throat> it suddenly becomes stiff and less shiny. <clears throat> You're completing the polymerization process. You're making your sugar plastic. And basically, I will beat this for the next five minutes or so. I get tired, and I'm not a weak guy. And occasionally, I even ask for help for people to come, and I shift hands. I basically keep beating fudge. And this isn't true of just for, this is true of all fudges. You keep beating them until it suddenly gets stiff and loses its gloss, and then it goes right into the pan, like so. Okay, so I'm working it. I'm looking for the right moment. Again, this is not easy. You gotta, if you need to get help from somebody, bring them on in. At just the right moment, it suddenly gets stiffer. And it becomes less shiny. And after a while, you'll know what that looks like. And you know that's the right moment to pour. Okay. Okay. Now I'm pouring. Now, don't scrape the pan. Because you're going to scrape those sugar crystals that you don't want anyways. Just kind of let it pour out. Let your kids get the stuff off the edges. You don't want it in your fudge. Okay. And there we go. I'm going to go put this somewhere to cool undisturbed. And this is rose flavored fudge.